Hello, welcome to training session seven of the Great Cow Basic um, training sessions. So today we're going to cover um, part three of pulse width modulation. Okay. In Sin, in Sin right here, let me just zoom in on Sin right. We have an empty page, and what we're going to do is I'm going to take the code from yesterday and put it into the editor. So if I come into the, this is the website, training session six, six, yeah, six it is. I'm just going to quickly come into here and grab this code. No, let's just start with a fresh one so we know what we're doing each time. Okay, so we know we need to put a hash chip in. And we know it's a 16F18313. Told you this before, use option explicit to make sure that all your variables are defined. And then what we're going to do is hook up using the PPS tool, the ports. And if we look at our, our PowerPoint again, in, in, in PowerPoint here, we can see that um, we have an LED here. And that's connected to RA1, and this is connected to RA2. And if you follow this through, okay, you can see that that one goes to here. Uh, that one goes to there, which is proves what I've said. So we just need to hook the pulse width modulation uh, module inside of the core here into um, into the uh, chip so let's just clear that down oh i've already cleared it down let's zoom in on this so we can see it clearly the pps tool i have got the chip pre-selected and i'm going to connect ra1 the sorry pulse with module 5 to ra1 add that pulse with module 6 to ra2 and add that and copy that code don't edit it recreate it each time it's good practice into our editor and paste that in and that's now set that up well rather than have me retype a lot of constants about setting the ports as in and out i'm going to quickly come into what we had yesterday and just steal them okay all right and paste them in it's the same as yesterday leds and switches and resistors etc okay now today i'm going to create a do forever loop and we're going to update this um forever to change this duty cycle initially all right loop that now i'm going to be using a 10-bit number to read the analog port why am i doing that because it gives me greater uh, resil it gives me greater accuracy more steps so if i use read read ad it gives me 255 and if i use um here we go if i use um 10 bit code i can have 1024 steps in my in my led so or in my motor driver so i'm going to dimension adc value as a word i'm going to be using that to read in my my um command okay so 
ADC value equals read AD10. And remember from earlier on, we're on Anna zero, okay? Anna zero, zero. And then what I need to do is I'm gonna use the hardware PMW module and it needs a number of parameters and you can look in the help for this. It needs, it needs a channel. I work channel five, remember from the top, we're using channel five or six. Channel five, a frequency we use eight. Duty cycle, we're gonna put that in as ADC value. And we need to tell it a timer. Now let me just show you why the help doesn't show you that initially. Press F1. We're using a 10 bit number here. So we have to give it an additional timer. All right, so channel, frequency, duty cycle, and timer is very important. Okay, very important. So um, let's just go back to, into our editor. I think that's our code. I think that will work. Let's save this. Training 7B. There we go. Let's just try programming that. Have we got a signal in the scope? Oh, we have. That's really good. I'm impressed by that. Um, let me just bring up that camera for you. You tell me why it doesn't work every time. There's this camera working there. Huh. Oh, there we go. It's working there. I have to just click through the editor here just to make it work sometimes. Sorry about that. Now, if I rotate the pot, I'm changing the duty. Look, look at that. Pretty cool. And that, that, that little bit there, look, is because I've got that limiting resistor on it. Okay, all right. And it will settle down to zero. There we go, it's gone to zero. Now, let me just go back into Synrite for you. We'll zoom in on, on a, we'll get on, on here. And um, in here, I'm just gonna put the inverse in on PW6 for you, okay? So I'm just gonna put 1023 less that, okay? And it will just do the invert. Now I haven't changed the, the channel number, channel number six. And we're just gonna program that up and see what happens. Just programming it. Ooh. I guess my code's wrong. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty good. Hey, one's high, one's low. Look, that's pretty good. We're getting what we want. So we're changing dynamically the um, the uh, the duty cycle. Now, th this is the optimization I need to show you. Okay, so if I if we look at um, the code itself, I'm going to zoom in on my desktop here. If we look at the code itself, you might not be able to see that. That's a piece of code at 657. Trust me, it's 657. All right. So I'm just going to use the um, I'm just going to optimize that code to reduce it down quite a lot. Okay. I'm going to select IDE tools. ID tools, snippets, and there's a piece of code called optimization code for GCB, which you cannot see on your desktop. Let me go to my desktop. I selected ID tools, snippets, optimization code, and all these are set to true. Now we saw this earlier on, so I my best practice is to select the whole whole of that piece of code to just put in and set it to false. I set all the trues to false and then only select the ones that you want, okay? This is quite important, but nine minutes. So what do we want? We want um, to set HP and the PMW5 to true and six to true. We're using timer two and we're using a, um, analog digital here let's have a look we, we were at 657 we're now we've now saved we're down to 594 and the code should still be operating and it is on my right hand side so we can leave that in the bottom because that's quite important 
because you know all I've done is is said right I'm going to be using ADC zero timer two and these two and these channels five and six because there's so many of them across all whole range of chips it's quite difficult so how do I how would I change dynamically the frequency on this so I'm going to put in another variable in here dynamic frequency okay as a word oh i don't need it as a word never mind i'll put it as a up i'm going to change that into a byte because i'm just being lazy as a byte and i'm going to set it to one to start with okay and then i'm just going to increment it up slowly okay i'm going to increment it so i'm just going to change my frequency of eight here to, uh, to, to another frequency. Now, what I should do is just show you the frequency of um, what we're currently operating at, okay? So if I look at the meter, for those who remember it, we are currently, if I zoom in on the oscilloscope for you, yeah, there we go. When you zoom in on the oscilloscope, it's not working for some reason. Oh, it's, not, it's on the screen there. No, I've lost the plot here. Oh, there you go, it's eight. It's currently eight, which is what we think it should be. So what we're going to do is we're going to change this and we're going to see it change dynamically, okay? So you can change this uh, during, your, during, uh, during runtime. So I'm just going to change that, that value there. I don't know how this is going to work in reality, okay? I'm going to put a weight in it for 100 milliseconds, otherwise it's going to be so fast, okay? equals the same value plus one so i'm just going to get it to increase up from from one to um 255 okay it's gonna be so fast okay we're barely going to see it to be quite frank okay we're going to watch this in um we're going to watch the oscilloscope ch change here here we go see if it works seven Oh, 18, 29. That is changing that at high speed. So what is it doing to the, what is it doing inside of the oscilloscope? Well, the oscilloscope's really struggling because it's way beyond the capabilities of this oscilloscope. Trust me, it is, okay? We're up at the 250s now. If I auto that, there we go. It just, and we can see it dynamically change the frequency. And at some point, that oscilloscope will fall over in a heap because it's too fast and the frequency it falls over is about 37 okay so let's just uh, play with that code and we'll call it a day we're going to go back into um, the editor into here and say if it's greater than 32 then And now we'll just see it cycle through. It's cycling through at high speed. If we look at the oscilloscope in terms of what's going on, we should see it change frequency. And I'll just do an auto on that for us so we can see it. So there we go. Look. It's not changing the it's not changing the duty it's just changing the frequency because if I put my screwdriver in here I can change the duty dynamically as well look at that I'm now making that change its duty and the frequency dynamically and we've optimized the code we did that in recap We've optimized the code by adding in set of constants that control it. We've got the code down to less than 30%. And this is a huge piece of code that we've written here. Uh, but we don't, I mean, you know, we can optimize it even further. But essentially, we've this will port to other chips very easily. So we've defined the chip, we've defined the PPS, and then we've read it in with a 10-bit value, and we've set it dynamically. I think that's we will call that a bit of a, a, wrap. Bit of a wrap. Um 
Let me go back into PowerPoint to make sure we've done all we said we're going to do. I think so. So we'll call that a wrap. Um, thank you.